Hi, and welcome to the Idiomania Connection podcast, season two. Season two has been really demonstrating how young people in our society have been stepping up, especially in this day and age, to achieve wonderful things without fear or hesitation. And on today's show, we're going to be uh, speaking to Charlie Randall. Um, You may remember him from the Secret Men's Business podcast, and he's going to be talking to us about, I guess, the things that inspire him and the things that make him fulfill his life. Charlie, how are you, mate? Good, good. Excited to be on the show. So it's going to be good. It's very, it's very good to see you again, especially, you know, we were chatting offline about how wonderful life is without lockdown. And um, you must think that us Australians, are, <laughs> what, do you, what do you actually think of Australia being locked down so much? Do you think that we're crazy? <laughs> uh, I just think, I, I, I think obviously we had the lockdowns first and it just feels like you've never really come out of the lockdowns. Um, yeah. But no, hopefully you'll get there. I mean, um, hopefully the vaccine rollout will start easing things off a little bit hopefully but we'll see yeah i mean actually you know that's a really good explanation you've I never thought of it that way we've never really come out of lockdown that is a hundred percent um so just you know to start off i always ask the same question okay so like you know this podcast is about fulfillment and about happiness without depending on anything so what do you think is your what's your go-to thing that makes you happy the most Goji thing that makes you happy? Oh, food, I'd probably say. So, so, yeah, so what, so, I, yeah, what happens when you have food? So, it's always been my sort of go to. my life and so sort of different things remind you of different times in your life like there are certain meals that my mum will do and I'm like oh my god that completely re- reminds me of being a kid or that re- completely reminds me of being on holiday it's things like that it's, I just think it's a great way to like relive memories yeah that's uh, yeah that's I love I love asking that question because everyone has a different answer to what makes them happy like I interviewed a DJ and of course music made him happy and I you know I interviewed someone who was a um, an opera singer and so everyone has their thing so um do you cook are you a cook do you like to cook your own food yes uh i'm quite a keen cook being a bit of a health freak um i'm always in the kitchen cooking different things as i say quite an experimental cook because i like food from all the way around the world yeah probably the better cook out of me and my partner <laughs> and she yeah. will admit that as well <laughs> Yeah. Um, well, you know, you run the business not uh, quite politically correct and you do a lot of work with disability and so on. So, Charlie, are you ready to get your first question? Yes, let's go. Okay. So, Charlie, what would you do? What do you think you would do if you were able to be invisible for one day? If you were able to be invisible and do whatever you want to do, what do you think you would want to do? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, I don't know. I'd probably see. Do you know what I'd do? I'd sit in all like. Yes, you do. Because I, I just don't, particularly like with Boris Johnson, everyone kind of just thinks like, "What are you? What are you doing? Like, what? How do these meetings happen? How do these decisions happen?" So it'd be really cool to just kind of sit in on those conversations. Be like. Oh, okay, this is how you make those decisions. Wow, I love it. You can do anything at all, and you choose to go and sit with Boris Johnson. I see. This is the thing I love about this, this show is that people come up with the most random answers. <laughs> you could go yeah. anywhere, and you want to go to Parliament. Good on you. I love it, and it actually probably goes in with your business name, isn't it? That you are interested in yeah. politics and and all that. Um. I want you to go back in time, Charlie, and think about kindergarten, right? And I want you to tell yeah. me what uh, what are some of the things that you remember about kindergarten? Oh, what are some of the things I remember about kindergarten? Um, I'm trying to think of what we used to get up to. I was big into um, Lego and anything like buildings. So that was a big thing for me. But I had a habit of trying to build as tall as I possibly could. But the issue is, obviously, I couldn't stand up. So there was only... My, my capabilities stop <laughs> um, and also I was notorious for building structures that would notoriously fall on me and I'd end up going to my parents or teachers and be like it's happened again <laughs> yeah um, you know how kin- I guess kindergarten is the first place that we interact a lot with other kids 
I mean, because of, um, you know, your disability, did you feel inspired to build those buildings and those Lego things and not worry? Like, you know, that's one of the things that I really love about you is that you just live your life and you've inspired me to not question little things. Like, so how, back then, do you remember being the way you are now? Or do you remember that formulating, that sort of um, inner strength? Yeah, I mean, to, to be honest, at that time, I was probably the most blissful in terms of because kids don't know anything. So the, I wasn't treated any different because to me, to them, I was just a normal kid that, that just happened to use a walking frame or whatever. And so that was kind of the sort of easiest time of So then it becomes a little bit different than that to when you really start growing. I'd probably say that growth more happened in sort of when I was about seven or eight as opposed to when I was that young. But I always had that um, wanting to push boundaries uh, in me. Um, even when I was a kid, my parents mm. would look at me and go, literally anything you throw at you, you're like, yeah, I'll give it a go. You know what? You actually look like one of those guys that would do anything. <laughs> You've got that yeah. little, like, that look that, you know, I'm going to do whatever I uh, want to do. And I, uh, I love that. Um, what do you think is probably the most courageous thing that you've done in your life? Courageous thing that I've done? Uh, I've saved someone from drowning. How did that happen? Which I'm quite proud. I was quite proud of. Um, so I was in a training session when I first started out swimming. Um, for those that don't know, I, um, I spent a long time swimming when I was between sort of 12 and 18. I got to quite a high level. Um, almost ended up in Team GB as well. Um, but essentially, I was training um, and we had some younger kids training with us, which is absolutely fine. One of the younger kids jumped in and I've noticed as I'm swimming along that she's really struggling and I can't figure out like what what's going on. I'm looking around at the lifeguards going, anyone gonna, no? Are we just, okay. So um, <laughs> me being me, it was like, okay, I'll try and pull her out got her to the side um and sorted everything out but oh my god it was obviously i can only really swim with my arms so i'm holding on to her and then using one arm to get myself to the side wow um did that did that yes, sort of show you yes. did that did that show you something like did that was that a, a realization moment that you know here you are trying to do your little swimming and you're saving someone you know was that a what was that moment like for you i know it was i know it was scary because actually to be it, honest yeah Sorry. Yeah, I think it made me realise, like, if you get thrown into something, you just do it. You don't think about it. You just... You, your main goal... My main goal in that scenario was I will get this person to the side. So your abilities kind of... You kind of get this, like, superhuman moment of, like, look, I've got to get this done, whatever happens. So you just go with it. And I think that's always really weird to experience. Yeah. Um. I mean, like I always, you all, you come across as a very positive person, and I know that you're human, and I know that we've talked about the fact that you've gone through moments of humanity, like you've been down, like you've been up. So, but what do you think you? What's your connection, or what do you go to to, to find that balance and happiness for yourself? Like I know you mentioned food, but you know, is it your? Is it? I just want to know if it's you or it's something else that makes you connect with this way of seeing life. Uh, I really don't know. I mean, I, I think, see, my mum, well, particularly my mum, my mum's very glasses half full and that's been drilled into me from a very young age. Although if you did speak to family members, <laughs> they'd probably say I'm a bit of a negative Nelly just because uh, I always think, think of things from every possible angle. Um, but I think that's where it all comes from is it comes from that whole thing of like, look, if you keep thinking these things are not going to happen, you're never going to get anywhere. So if you might as well attack everything at full at full throttle and mm. see where you can go. So I think it is it does come from my parents. I mean, uh, as I've mentioned before, both my parents are self-employed, so they've got that drive within them. And I think it's naturally just been given to me, luckily. But yeah, um, yeah. And it, but then again, there's that element as well of. I've always been notorious for having like a chip on my shoulder in terms of um, where my parents are quite successful. I've almost always felt like I've got to do something special to make them look up. Um, right. 
I mean, do you think do you yeah, think that's do you think that's do you think that's true, or do you, do you realize now as you get older that they probably do look up at you? Um, I think, uh, yeah, I think uh, to be honest, as I got older, I've realized that it's just particularly um, my my mum, bless her, uh, <laughs> she'll probably hate me for saying that she's not a cuddly, cuddly, protective um, unless she needs to be person. Um, so it's always that whole she she very rarely come up to you and go like well done but inside <laughs> i know she's like yeah yeah, yeah. good job um, yeah i was going to say well, that's, a little, that's a little that's a little bit that's a little bit dad. that's a little bit english as well isn't it that sort of sort of yeah. quiet humble sort of thing um in your life what do you feel would be something that you regret doing is there any reg- like is there anything you've done that you may have regretted and and, you know you know that mistakes and things like that are good learning points so what was maybe one of your learning points with that i'm trying to think um what was my biggest one of my biggest blunders i really don't know i i'm not i'm not saying that i don't can't i don't have them i just can't think of them at the moment um I might have to come back to that one. We might have to revisit that. Well, one. it could, it could, it could just be that. I mean, like, I think that it's good to explore this. It could just be that you don't see life having those sort of um, bumps. You know, you sort of see the other side of it, which is that you've just been learning. Because you know, I, 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 these questions are not given to you because I do want that first reaction to come out. And if that was your first reaction that you don't know, I think that we need to sort of honour that, you know. Like, do you yeah. do you do you see? Do you think that there have been mistakes in your life, or do you really see that, or do you think that you see those things as being lessons? Um, I think definitely I've made mistakes. I mean, everyone does, but uh, I can't think of one that I uh, uh, oh crap moment. Like, I can't think of one of those. Um, hmm. um, Critical. Um, so I always, I one of my most annoying traits is I one of the uh, worst people for overthinking things. So whenever mm. I approach anything, I will look at it from every single angle. And Gina, Gina, my partner, always says it. Whenever you're thinking, it looks like you're going through the matrix in your head, going, <laughs> "Is this gonna work, or is this not gonna work?" So that probably helps me in terms of I analyze a lot of stuff. I think it comes from my disability and having to constantly think, okay am I able to do this safely without injuring myself or not? And it's kind of that, I always take that approach. But then having said that, I definitely do make mistakes because everyone does. But as you say, I probably do take the approach of, oh, okay, I won't do that again. Let's try it this way. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't hope this question isn't, isn't too, too forward or anything, but like, if you were, if you didn't have a disability, what would be one thing that you think that you would love to do? I'd and, love you to know, be a professional footballer. Okay, so okay, so so football. Can you explain a little bit more about that that passion? I guess what was what's the connection to to the football? Yes, I mean, uh, so my family love it or hate it are notorious Chelsea fans. We are all of, all are across the board, um, and. I've also got uh, my cousin plays Premier League uh, Premier League football as well. Um, so I've just always loved, like I've always been sporty as you as you know, and I mm. think that that just would have been naturally an avenue that I would have explored of going to play football. But obviously, it's big. My dad dad did it when he was a kid. My cousins did it. I did it uh, playing in disability teams. But it definitely would have been something that I probably would have pushed because I have got that mentality of um, I want to get to the top. But having yeah. said that, I don't know whether that's that's a disabled thing. I don't know whether that's come with my disability or not. Um, I don't know, because I don't like sport. <laughs> not, <laughs> not, not, like, I, 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 I listen, I'm listening to you and I'm going, I, I'm curious now to ask you, like, so you've got this, this love for soccer or football. So then how have you... Um, made that something that you do? How do you play another version of it? Like, I don't know. Like, what do you do to actually feel as if you're playing? Do you do that? So um, I, uh, I I stopped playing um, competitive football when I was about 16, 17 because I was going into swimming. But basically, I used to play for a disability uh, soccer football team that um, I 
I also, as well as my wheelchair, I use a walking frame. The ball touches your walking frame, the game has to stop for 10 seconds and no mm. one can touch you. Um, so I would have 10 seconds on the ball. The tactic would always be give Charlie on the defence line, just get him to run the length of the pitch and then give it back to us. Um, so that that obviously gave me that um, that feel of obviously being part of a team and playing in football. It was really good fun. Uh, to be honest, I keep debating going back to it. But um, no, so I have been able to sort of enjoy that. Um, but competitively, as I say, I've always wanted to go to the top. So that would definitely would have yeah. definitely been something I would have explored. I mean, it is pretty. Um, it's pretty exciting to think that you almost got into the swimming. You love, you know, you love soccer and football. I can hear in your voice that desire to not just play. You want to be the best, or you want to be competitive, yeah. right? So, I guess the next question is: How does having that competitive nature help you to find happiness? How does that uh, push you? Give us a minute. I think because um, of see with with disabilities, I always say there's two ways you can go with it. You can go down the route of woe is me and constantly feel sorry for yourself, or you can just attack it, and see what's possible, and that's where I think the happiness has come from. Of I think in particularly the last four years for me. On, look, I'm just going to go hell for leather at everything and see what happens. And because of that, I've had very, obviously, I still have up and down days. But I'm a lot better than I used to be because I think I'm just perpetually moving. So I don't think. Yeah. yeah. I, I think one of my favorite, favorite things I always hear in speeches and everything is you can think yourself into a hole. So yes. if you don't give yourself a chance to think, then you're pro probably in a better space altogether. So I think it's been a massive help sort of developing that skill of just keep pushing. Um, yeah. So that's probably where it's really helped my happiness. Yeah. I mean, that has been the same sort of common answer with everyone that I've interviewed. Is that it's all about the way that you see things rather than the things telling yourself you can't. So I want you to be as honest as you can, Charlie, okay, with this question. But what do you then tell yourself or how do you handle it when – you know, people that you see around you in everyday life complained. Uh, I uh, I fall on very different sides of the line depending on what day you catch me on because obviously there is that element of what have you got to complain about? Um, you've got legs that work or this, that, the other, or you've got a successful life. But I then someone once gave me a piece of advice I always bear in mind. And people are only, they only know what they've been exposed to. So for example, uh, people always go, oh, like you haven't experienced a depression like mine. And I'm like, no, because depression is a very personal thing. So is everything else. So it's that you kind of have to take that approach of, look, that's the way they view things. That's what they've been exposed to. I have been exposed to different things so that I, I view it in a different way. So I always try and take that approach, but obviously there are days when I'm like, what are you bitching about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, do you ever, um, do you ever sort of feel um, an emotional connection to the way the world sometimes is one big and I am making an assumption here, but sometimes everyone that seems to be complaining or everyone seems to be forgetting to look around and notice the beautiful parts of the world, right? Rather with, you know, I, I think as a social media now, we've just got more reasons to complain, you know? So do you sometimes ever feel like why or are you more focused on, on just making sure that you're on track with yourself? Yeah, I mean... Um... Uh, that's a that's a really good question. I mean, I, it's that whole thing of being able to look up and realize what's going on around you. And I think that's quite a it's quite a British thing. That whole constantly busy, got to be doing something. Particularly in London, I hate going to London, particularly when it's a work day, because everyone's got somewhere to be. And if you ask for the smallest amount of help, you think you'd just ask them to chop off their limb and give it to you, <laughs> but. So I, it just, it, that is just the British way or, or the London way, I should say, because the further north in England you go, the nicer people get. Mm. I mean, to be honest, mate, I really do think that it's not a London, it's a, it's a world thing. 
And I really, and I also personally think that coronavirus has actually made it even more intense. More people are, you know, they're on Facebook and all that, and they're just complaining and all that sort of stuff. So, I, you know, I, I, I think it's not just the UK. I think it's happening everywhere. So, when you know, how do you, how do you view it all? How do you view that when you see people just running around and not stopping to help people and not thinking about what they're going to say? Again, does it make you? Are you are you compassionate or are you do you just ignore it? Uh, it's a bit of both, really. I mean, um, because obviously me naturally, because I do need a bit more help in life, um, I naturally lean towards if someone needs a hand, I'll always offer it. Um, but then again, it comes back to everyone's got their own thing going on. Like you, for example, you could be asking this person for help and they go, no, 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 I can't help you. I'm really busy. You never know. They could be going to going home to help their sick relative and you have no. No, it is that whole, the world. And I think we all just need to take a step back and, and, realize that if if you're five minutes late to something realistically it's not the end of the world no one's gonna yeah. die as, yeah. that's what my dad always my dad always says to me my dad always says if anything goes wrong like you're not gonna as long as you don't die nothing happened i remember when i was a kid uh say when i was a kid when i was 18 i first started driving um and uh, essentially i crashed the uh, well I bumped into another car, caused some damage to my car and their car. Anyway, so I phone my parents and I'm bricking it, uh, thinking, "Oh my God, they're gonna they're gonna lay into me. That's gonna be the end of it." And my dad's response was, "Are you all right?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I'm fine." He said, "All right, it's just a lump of metal. At the end of the day, it's a lump of metal. As long as you're all right, it's fine." Oh, I love your dad. And that's that, so good. <laughs> and that, and that's that's the way I always think. It's like at the end of the day, like no one's gonna you're not gonna die so like, mm. like i always try and remember when i'm getting stressed at work or whatever i'm like look no no one's gonna die the world's not gonna end because you haven't done x thing yeah yeah so and i mm. think that's just the approach we have to take to a lot of things like if someone needs a hand if it takes you an extra five minutes it takes you an extra five minutes yeah i mean i look at it uh, i mean like i sort of do the same thing and just say to myself that you're okay i always say to myself you're okay you're okay <laughs> You know, uh, but yeah, it's true. I think a lot of people do probably get caught up in the small stuff. Um, Charlie, so this is a fun question, okay? <laughs> so they've decided, yeah. Hollywood has decided to make your movie a life movie. I want to know what, char what what actors do you want to play Charlie Randall? Oh, good question. <laughs> um, oh, I don't know. I really don't know that one. Um, Come on, you do I'm know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm racking my brain. I'm like, who who I'd want to do? <sighs> I know who I'd want to play my dad. Who? I don't know who I'd want to play me. I'd want um, Daniel Craig to play my dad. Okay, so does he look like, like Daniel Craig? <laughs> <laughs> A little. A tiny bit. Um, I James Bond. We on yeah, we were on holiday once and uh, this American couple came up to us. Like, oh, your dad looks like Daniel Craig. And I sat there and went, it really yeah. hmm. I'm trying to rack my brain of like all the different ginger act I probably go Charlie, you there? to see what Adam Sandler would do. Say, 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 can you say that again? Because you, you hey mate, you just you froze on me. So say that again, okay? Pretend I just asked you the question. Yeah, no worries. Um, I probably go. It's gonna be really weird, but I'd just be intrigued to see what he does with the character. I'd say Adam Sandler. Wow, well, Adam Sandler. See, see, I, I, I would have said I would have said Orlando Bloom. You look like Orlando Bloom a little bit. Uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know whether my family would agree with that one. Well, who who do you think would play your girlfriend? Um, uh, so you could have you could you could choose anyone now. <laughs> <coughs> yeah. Oh, who, I can't think of the name of the actor. What's it have to be? 
can't think of the name of the actor. Is it uh, Emma Watson? I think it is the one who plays oh. Hermione from Harry Potter. Yeah. Okay, so see, this is this is interesting. So you got a bit of a Her- Hermione crush. <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe maybe we need to get Daniel Radcliffe to play you. That'd be it. Yeah, you could get Prince Harry to play me. True. See, I didn't realise that you were... So you're actually a ginger, are you? Oh. Am I back? Yeah. Sorry, I, 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 was, I, I, I said, um, are you a ginger, naturally? I didn't know that. Yes, yeah, I'm fully fledged ginger naturally. Um, yeah, Ed Sheeran um, look alike all day long. <laughs> oh, I know, but I think gingers are, 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 are cool people. It's like, um, uh, yeah, there's, there's, I love them. I love, the, I love the whole, the whole way that they've got this uprise. There's a conspiracy that gingers are going to take over the world. <laughs> <laughs> Especially because my partner's ginger as well. Is she? Um, so the last question is, um, what are your, what are some of your go-to nicknames? What are you called by people? Cool. How, how long have you got? Um, really? You so, got that many? Yeah. My, my mum calls me Chucky uh, because everyone, and this really annoys me because everyone thinks it's because of um, the doll, uh, the the doll, and the scary film, and the, it's not. It's actually from. Um, uh, do you have the kids show over there called the Rugrats? Yep. Yeah. Uh, it's because Chucky out of the Rugrats. If I put my glasses on, I look like Chucky out of the Rugrats. <laughs> okay. So what about you? What about um, your mates? What do they call you? Mates. Uh, so my mates. There's plenty of names. Uh, I've been called Charles Xavier. Uh, after the X Men character, <laughs> uh, oh. I have been called um, Crip Nips, which is another one because of being in a wheelchair and having quite a defined chest. I think is the word. Um, <laughs> uh, what else? Uh, obviously, Ginger is quite a normal one for me. Um, I got get cool oh there's loads there's absolutely loads there's the more normal ones but i'm trying to think of the quirky ones i mean my sister calls me shithead but that's <laughs> my sister i mean it sounds again it sounds like you know i mean like normally we would expect one but you've got like a list of different nicknames it sounds like you are really comfortable and you don't take things too seriously when it comes to this sort of stuff do you that nah, not at all like my the difficult thing i find with this is obviously if people hear these different names and different things people call me, um, they think that that's just norm, normal in terms of they can call me it. And it's a very, yeah. like, it's a very personal thing. Um, and like off my friends, I'll completely take it, but off a complete stranger, it's like, no. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't think, I don't think, I don't think you want to, I don't think you want a complete stranger to call you a shithead. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm um, very confused. <laughs> yeah. Um, so to, to sort of wrap it up, what would um, I know? I said that was the last question, but this is the last question, I promise. But yeah. what would be what would be your advice to people in regards to how they can find their happiness? Like, what, uh, what would you say to someone that was saying to you, "I can't, I, I don't know what makes me happy. I don't know anything." What would you tell them to, as, as advice? My first piece of advice would be take a, if you're really struggling on finding what's going to make you happy, is take a step back and look at what gives you the most happiness in terms of like in if you if i said to you right during this week what things have made you happiest and you go this this and this basically all you got to do then is do that more often and then and the other thing is take a very try and take a step back um within life because i say it can you can get wrapped up in the rat run quite a lot yeah and then you take a step back you can be a lot more um aware of what you're going what's going on what you're achieving and things like that like one of my favorite things to do and it's probably something that i'd recommend to anyone that's looking to find happiness i particularly do it new year because it's something my parents always did was they come up to me on new year's and go right what what did you what did you achieve this year and you list off what you did this year wow. and then you go okay what what do you want to do next year Yes. And then you'd list up and then you you
or did I do something completely different? And it's really good as well for me and Gina, obviously running the business, we do it every year now and go, shit, we've actually done a lot of stuff that like we, we wouldn't yeah. even dreamt of. I know. <laughs> yeah, I do, I do a similar. Th- I do a similar thing, but what I actually do is when I'm doing stuff on the day, I write it down on a post-it note, and I put that post-it note into a jar, and then rather than thinking about it on years, I just read out all the things in the jar, and it's the same. Oh, like really? you, to- you totally forget some of the little things that you do, and you're going, "Oh my god!" Like I forgot about that, and you sort of it reminds yeah. you of all those things to be grateful for. So that would be my advice. Um, yeah, and just and the other thing is don't put too much pressure on yourself. Mr. Charlie Randall, thank you so much for coming on our show again and for inspiring us and for making us laugh and for being such a great Brit that you are. And one day <laughs> we, will, we will be able to travel and we'll come and see you. So have a great night. I know it's night time there. And um, thank you again for your, well, your, everything that you do. No worries, guys. Have a good morning. You've been listening to the Itty Media Connection podcast. So the podcasts are out on Wednesdays and there's 10 episodes per season. So you're watching season two. So make sure you hit like and subscribe. And if you do want to get in touch with Charlie, all his details will be linked below. Send him, a, send him an email or something. I know that he'll reply. He's a really amazing person. So see you next time. Make sure to look for your fulfillment. Bye. Bye.